explain how AI is going to impact and what are the sits on top of other networks. So our game is about bringing one plus one plus one. It depends on position of government as a state. Hundred percent, it is going to destroy. Massive disruption. Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Recently, I have seen two different videos. The two political leaders talking about AI, the artificial intelligence. Both described how AI is going to impact India. Being a software engineer, I have some basic idea as how AI works and what are the challenges going further as a software engineer or as a country will face. But these two political leaders described how it is going to impact India and India development and in Indian economy and Indian job market. I stressed my head to understand what these two leaders are talking about. Of course, one of the leader who made his point very clear and explained how AI is going to impact and what are the challenges that we are going to face. But another leader connects AI with so many things and uh, how it impacts India. You have to watch these two videos without fail, without pausing. After watching, please comment your opinions, which is really important. Thank you. Please watch the video. Population. I'll give a follow-up question on what Vikram added. I think we are seeing a lot of amazing Gen AI tools coming up like Chat GPT and other. And all of these are coming from Western countries. Like India hardly has any big tools. Like two big reasons. We lack a right framework and we also lack right talent pool. And this will widen the gap of like you know, urban versus rural in India. So I think that's another area we would like to hear your views. Whatever AI you're generating, producing, sits on top of other networks. So AI is applied on top of a network. AI can be applied on top of a production network. You can apply AI in a factory. You can apply AI on a consumption network. So, you know, people are consuming something, you're distributing something, you can apply AI on that. So AI sits on top of a network, right? I'll tell you a very interesting story to demonstrate the power of this thing. It's not directly related to AI. The United States attacks Iraq, okay? Within 25 days, it has wiped out the entire Iraqi military. And then six months later, something happened. And suddenly, US soldiers were dying every day. And within a six month period, the US army lost about a thousand armored vehicles. So how did a country or a system that couldn't take on the United States, at all and failed to take them on, suddenly six months later, literally broke their back. What happened? Saddam Hussein came from a tribe called the Tikriti tribe. This tribe was the center of the Iraqi regime. When Saddam Hussein realized that America is coming, he told all his Tikriti guys, Bhaiya, tum log bhago. What did he do? He basically took 155 millimeter shells. You know they are? Artillery shells. And he distributed them to all these guys. And he said, Gaon mein ko le jao. And these guys took these artillery shells and they dug them in the ground. That's all. So what I'm trying to tell you, the Tikriti network came together, cell phone network came together, and the explosive shells came together. Three networks that were disconnected came together. And they literally obliterated the superpower in Iraq. So the game is about bringing unconnected networks together. Now, what is the biggest problem in India? Our biggest networks are not connected at all. So you guys are a tiny network. You're 1% of the country. Very small network. You're not connected to anything else. I mean, if you really want to bring India's power to bear, then you have to think about these things. Networks are energy, right? The moment you bring them together, it doesn't become one plus one plus one. It becomes exponential. Blam, it just goes. If you use that framework, you can see that that's a very powerful framework in politics. It's a very powerful framework in business. Samajwadi party network joined with Congress network. Earlier that network was like this. Now the network is suddenly lined up together. Now, the problem is in India is that pretty much all the conversations that we're having of development, etc., etc., exclude 90% of our population. Meaning the really powerful network is sitting outside. So what is the role of technology and IT is to apply your understanding and knowledge on those networks. But right now what the game is taking place is you're in 1% or not able to apply the stuff in the large 90% of, of India. And then these, these networks are not only 
physical networks, right? So there are caste networks in India. There are business networks in India. There are agricultural networks in India. So that to me is an interesting way to think about it. Vision of adding to Asha's question and what you have mentioned, how do you perceive the role of AI in shaping the mindset of masses, especially in social and political context? Do you see AI as a boon or a bane? And how do you see the role of AI in governance and position of government as a stakeholder in generative AI? Before coming into the campus, I was sitting outside in a coffee shop. I was having coffee. There was a startup guy sitting there, busy with his laptop. He looked at me, I looked at him. Both had time. Uh, I said, what, who are you? He said, sir, I'm some startup guy. He asked me, who are you? I said, I'm, I'm doing politics here. Within 30 minutes, let us discuss. I said, which field you are? And he said, I'm in the people hiring field. I said, it's going okay. He said, no, sir, AI has disrupted everything, sir. Now all resumes are fake, sir. People write all beautiful things and we are taking so much time to, <laughs> so much time to realize what is right and what is wrong. All statement of purpose, very fancy ones they write. It looks so believable, very emotional. And it just happened to me, it just happened to me 30 minutes before outside your campus in the road across in the coffee shop. So 100% it is going to disrupt. It, massive disruption is on. And let me go one step further. For a country like us, which is just getting into that orbit of high growth, because your second part of the question is about how the country AI disruption. And we are just warming up to get into that orbit of $10,000 per capita income. We are about $5,000 now. And we have an ambition to reach there. Now I am going to read out the statistics for you. Since you are max guys, I prepared something in my computer and came. And uh, what is India's GDP now? So we are about 3.8 trillion. You are take a little bit million here and there, 3.8 trillion. So China's GDP is about 17.9 trillion today. I hope it is a true figure from China because nobody knows what is a true figure. 17.9 trillion dollar. And uh, the Americans are somewhere around 37.8 trillion dollar today. Americans are at 37.8. I'm getting the acknowledgement from the professor, which means my numbers are right. 3.8, 17, and 37 is the number we are looking. I was just calculating, when I go to IIT campus, these guys are going to make my country, our country, the developed country by 2047, correct? That is our goal. So I was thinking, how will you guys do it? So I did a simple uh, mathematics calculation. If India is growing 13.5% from today, Remember, no country has grown 13.5% for more than two years. If India is growing 13.5% today, for the next 25 years, compounded annual growth rate, CIGR, F35.5, next year 13.5, 13.5. America is growing at 4% from today. 4%, 4%, 25 years. In 2047, we and US are equal. So you have to grow 13.5% every year. Americans have to grow at 4.5% every year. So that 2047, both sit at the same table and say, hello boss, both our economies are same. If we are growing at 13.5% today, for the next 2042 is what? 2024, 18 years? Yeah, 18 years. Next 18 years, you are growing at 13.5%, 18 years, tap, 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 tap. China is growing 4% next 18 years, tap, tap, tap. Then you will say, hello boss, we are equal. Now, look at the challenge. Can you grow at 13.5%? Because 2047, we have kept a target of 37, 38 trillion dollars now. From 3.8, we have to reach 38 trillion. Traditional ways of business is 100% not going to give you 13.5. Max 7 right now. Do well with a good prime minister, good policy, 8.5. Country aligns in the political sphere. All state governments wants to be in the business mode and less politics and more governance. All states in India, maybe 9.5. Then more IITs churning out intelligent guys like you. You're not going to US, I'm assuming. You all stay in our country. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you all stay in our country for the next 25 years. Do everything. 10.5. Correct? And China problem solved, Pakistan problem solved, everything solved. And uh, uh, there is no nuisance, political nuisance like me. Everybody is sober and everybody is good. 11.5.
correct we are talking of 13.5 2047 equal so now you are talking of artificial intelligence disruption 3d technology traditional manufacturing practices going for a toss americans are telling no more buying from china next president you have to manufacture in us and you are like hello boss you manufacture in us it will be costly to hell with that manufacture in us if us starts back manufacturing in a big way with my, the elon musk and people of the world if the europe starts manufacturing within them and they don't want to get into this cost arbitrage which china mastered for a long time so you have to understand that is the world you are entering tomorrow morning you are entering into the world the americans are very clear you know for a fact the next presidential elections in us first time in america's history after 1776 the whites are going to be a minority they are going to come down below 50%. So the brown skin and people like me, slightly more browner or black, whatever people call. And they are going to go above 50. Hispanics and Asians and everybody. The traditional whites, the Bible belts, the Mormons, people inside, the so-called traditional whites, they are going below 50. It is carrying them. And next president election is going to be defined by this thing. Of course, two 83-year-old guys are fighting. So you never know, one guy is walking unsteadily, other guy is like, I still have energy left. It is going to be the oldest presidential election. But it is not going to be defined by who is more fitter among the two. You are 83 years old, 80 come do a arm wrestling. It is not that. The American electorate are going to say, look, I am scared. My country, I am first time I am going below 50%. My manufacturing is not there. I am not getting jobs. My per capita income is coming down. If you look at the groups, the Hispanics and the Asians, their per capita income is growing up because they are more hard working. Maybe I am not hard working, but I don't want to work hard. Their artificial intelligence is entering. You start to imagine, it is reshaping the global politics. It is reshaping the way people are voting. Countries are going far right in Europe. Far right. You have seen uh, the current uh, Danish Prime Minister speaking in the parliament. Have you seen the speech? His speech about Muslims, his speech about immigration. Did you see? My God, different level. He's speaking that kind of language in a parliament because they are forced to go extreme right. And Palestine and Gaza, what? The day one, the terror attack inside Israel. How much killing? 800, 850? Close to 1,000 people? Innocent people died. People who just want to have a good fun in the evening, a party, they got killed, butchered, massacred. What is the retaliation from Israel? Today's count 29,700. Netanyahu's peace plan is, he is saying, give me the whole Gaza. I want to see what is happening. Let us have control over. Just imagine it is completely disrupting. People are fearful. People are afraid. People think the supply chain is going one side, probably to our hemisphere. And the south is fearing the north is regaining control. The north is fearing south is more noisy. The global south, the north. So you are getting into this geopolitical tension which, is, which was never there maybe 100 years before. Even World War II was not worse than this. Because there was a, now there is no powerful guy. There is zero powerful guy. Who will put a regulation? Why should I listen to Americans' regulation on AI? Tomorrow if Joe Biden is saying, oh, this is America's regulation on AI. You all have to follow. I am not going to follow. I am saying, who are you? No, no, they say 1950 I was a great superpower. I will say to hell with it. You are no more a super, you are declining superpower. You are no Pax Britannica, you are not no Pax Americana. For 100 years, one global superpower managing the whole world. Look at America. They want to manage the whole world. You put one, one aircraft carrier in South China Sea, you put one closer to the Koreans, you put one in the Middle East, you put a CENTCOM command here, you have a Pacific fleet, you have a Blue Water Navy. Everywhere Americans felt, oh, this is my century, I am controlling the whole world. Middle East fellow have to listen to me, the Koreans have to listen to me, the Japanese have to listen to me. Now, why will I listen to US? If you look at Jay Shankarji's statement, the American is listening to Jay Shankarji now. He is going to US and talking a language which we never thought in our lives, we will hear an Indian external affairs minister talking in US like that. So, the, the point I am trying, trying to tell you is, who is going to regulate AI? And it is completely cross-border. And Europeans don't have a common agreement on how to regulate. Some countries over-regulation, some countries lesser regulation. Americans have a problem. And you can't call the, the chiefs of big companies to the Congress every time 
and the congressmen cannot sit and go gruel them it looks good on tv for their constituents so you can get some votes that's the american model of democracy look good on tc span now what i'm trying to tell you is i don't have an answer that is why i'm giving a long answer to you <laughs> and and what i'm trying to tell you is there is no answer to it it is going to disrupt and that is why we need smart guys like you in politics because how many current politic politicians understand ai 543 members in the parliament yes they are very good in the traditional politics extremely good this cast you divide this cast you put and you put a candidate from this cast and and you put a and and you put a independent candidate from this cast sorry i will look this side sorry my i'm just going that side and you put an independent candidate from this cast he will be the vote cutter and they will win now unfortunately fortunately for us and unfortunately for a lot of people modi ji is rewriting the political equation he is saying oh development and he is talking vikshit bharat he is saying five years this and all those things. so now the politics have to change see people sitting there in delhi not understanding technology ai deep fake regulation over regulation is a problem you never know how to turn on that stove because dosa has to be pakka and it has to be correct thing you have to just flip it and put it now regulation has to do that right you put over a thing dosa will become black lesser it's uncooked stomach pain so i would only say better guys should get into positions of power guys of integrity like you guys of intelligence like you and understand 10 years from now how will it happen 20 years from now what will shape up how is the global demography changing how is the geopolitical tension now so google is number 1 now 10 years from now who will be number 1 and you all know the chip the ai what is the ai background what is the background for ai you, powerful chips drive ai right people say ai is not some bhuta or some uh, something sitting somewhere in norway and say oh i am ai here hello hi hi it is not that it is some powerful chips manufactured in in hong kong by tsmc which manufactures 56% of the world's chip and 60% taiwan or a company situated in netherlands which manufactures the machine for that chip 100 million dollar is one machine and we are looking at nanometer now sir nm we have got to 3 nm now the chip design 3 nm is the latest tsmc i am really fearful i am not hearing this conversation inside politics i want to hear this conversation inside politics i sit in many rooms i sit in lot of rooms i want to hear this conversation oh now now it is locked the company in netherlands the sole company in the world which supplies that machine to tsmc to nvidia it supplies to samsung and they have a monopoly for the next many many years to buy only that machine which can write three nanometer chip now and you are you are seeing there is a guy who is having that monopoly outside and who is going to have that ai monopoly in the next 10 years 15 years 20 years and i i fear that we are going to get loose out and that is why our government talks semiconductor manufacturing bring it chips and i don't see the language of an mla or mp who doesn't even understand what is happening something happening in in taiwan is going to have a repercussion in iit chennai so sorry for the long answer but but the short and sweet answer is we need intelligence guys like you with integrity to come into the playing field and don't be a spectator outside and and to see oh this guys will regulate 543 guys in parliament will tell me how to run my startup let me run my startup like that no you have to be there to tell people of your generation to tell them hello boss i am with you i understand your problem i am in the political field let us try and work out a solution and we are not here to harm you as a government and 13.5% growth for 25 years sir is it possible unless you disrupt the whole mindset of our country you need you got to have highways you got to have we have 51 one day 41 one day bharat trains we have to make it 500 the first bullet trail 2026 it is going to fly but we need 15 bullet trails we have 149 airports we need 300 we got to find inland waterways movement of goods you don't disrupt this i don't think 13.5% is possible and no no then you might tell me no no sir let us do after 2047 oh you are in a hurry let us grow only at 9% why do you want to come to iit chennai and raise our heart pressure to say 
13.5 percent sir what is this you yourself said 7 percent when a person like modi ji comes 8.5 percent when all governments behave like modi ji it is 10 percent when iit guys don't go to america they stay here 11 percent you yourself said all those things now you are saying 13.5 brother and sister we will become old in 2047 nigerians will come you know what nigeria is doing now to the world they are just warming up they are no more that third world country sitting in africa the democracy is getting stabilizing and once schools come colleges come nigeria gets a seat in the united nations table when the un gets reformed how can you say the most populous uh, country of africa i don't give you a seat in the table wait outside how will you say a country of 142 crore people reforms will come india will be a permanent member it's a matter of time it's geopolitics it's geopolitics and reforms have to happen and you cannot have a country of 142 crore to say or a boss you wait outside your time will come after 25 years so, so what i'm trying to say is we are in for a serious disruption politics economics geopolitics the way the supply chain is structured the way indian economy is being currently run so i hope and pray that you guys get into politics now you are like what is that we called you to give lecture on only economics <laughs> only policing only this thing and now now you are calling us so unless the politicians become smarter than the people to whom the governance is applied then there is no way you will progress faster so i hope and pray that we all together will solve the ai challenge now she is wondering no answer you gave me you took 15 minutes you traveled around the globe you went to chip and now you say you don't have an answer thank you for that very long answer sir <laughs> He's already becoming a politician, you see.